Jesus Christ is the most popular man that ever walked the face of the earth. There's never been a more popular man than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ executed the greatest act of love the universe and the earth has ever known. Jesus Christ has the most popular book that has ever been sold in the history of man. And Jesus Christ resurrected himself from the dead. He defeated death. He performed the greatest act of love. And he defeated death and resurrected himself. And through his resurrection, the cross of Christ, Jesus Christ left us a legacy. The legacy that yet while we're still sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. He didn't only die for the people he loved and who loved him, he also died for, the, for, the, for his enemies that whoever should receive that love should have everlasting life. First fruit salvation into heaven without being judged. In John chapter 3, Jesus Christ said, unless you're born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In Ephesians 4, the Holy Spirit writes through Paul the Apostle that Jesus Christ is the one who ascended into heaven, but not only did he ascend into heaven, he also descended into hell where he defeated death, where he preached the gospel, where he prayed to the Father and defeated death and rose from the dead on the third day. In Hebrews the Bible says that Jesus Christ has become our high priest and what better high priest can we ever have other than Jesus Christ, our high priest who lives forever. Because he lives forever, we live forever. In John 6, 63, Jesus Christ said, The words that I speak are spirit, and they are life. Jesus Christ said in the gospel, he said, Eat my flesh and drink my blood. And what Jesus Christ was saying is saying to do the works that I do with my flesh, with my body. As you see me do, that ye do also. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ, he, uh, a bruised, a reed he did not bruise. Meaning a weaker person, when he walked, he was gentle. He came as a lamb. And he was gentle as a lamb. And he, was, and he showed the righteousness of God and preached the true gospel of God for everybody who had the ears to ear to fulfill the first law, the, the law, the covenant of, of, uh, of Moses. And when he said, drink my blood, what Jesus Christ said, he meant receive my Holy Spirit, receive my love. Receive the love I did for you on the cross. And what the Bible, and, and when we receive his Holy Spirit and receive his love, and we say, yes, Jesus, I give you, I give you, I, I just say yes to your love, and I, and I give you a great offering with my heart, and I receive you, and I say, yes, Lord. To your, to the, and we say yes to the love of Jesus Christ, then Jesus Christ gives us His Holy Spirit and we become born again. We now receive a familiar spirit and we are able to have a fellowship with Jesus Christ Himself, God the Son, directly from His throne room. And because He lives, says in Hebrews, then we also live because we are now eating His words, His spiritual words, through His Holy Spirit. And because He lives forever, then we also live forever. Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Do the works that you see me do with your physical body and receive of my Holy Spirit. In Philippians, Chapter 2 says, Do nothing from selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above all names, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow in heaven and on earth 
and under the earth, and every, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So Jesus Christ was bestowed upon the name above all names from the Father because he was obedient to the Father and in every way so his name is spotless and without sin in Psalms 138 says I will praise your name before all the gods because you have magnified your word in your name above all things and this represents the joy, the rejoicing inside the soul when we receive the Holy Spirit of Jesus and when He draws us into fellowship with Him and He gives us work to do and He gives us purpose on this earth to share His gospel, to show the world the love of Jesus, to show the world the truth, the reality of who Jesus Christ really is. In Colossians chapter 1, Beginning in verse 11 says, May you be strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light of Jesus Christ. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or authorities, all things were created through Him and for Him. He is before all things and in Him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything He might be preeminent, for in Him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace through the blood of His cross. Jesus Christ made peace through the blood of His cross. It is through the soul. It says in Isaiah that He shed His soul out on the cross. He shed His soul on the cross for all mankind. That whoever receives that love should have everlasting life, first fruit inheritance, no judgment straight into heaven. And He became obedient to death even on a cross, making peace through that cross. God the Father took the initiative to send His Son to earth to die for everyone. He actually took the first step to send His Son, Jesus Christ, a spotless person who is, who is without sin, who offered Himself to the Father for the sins of all humanity. And the Father accepted Him, says in Hebrews. He was accepted of all of His supplications, all of His petitions. When he was, also when He was in the pit of hell defeating death for us so that through his resurrection his conquering of death we all have redemption of sins we all have victory and we all also share and partake in the likeness of his resurrection Jesus Christ opened up the way for all humanity to receive eternal life if not for the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ death would be final there would be no resurrection in Acts 2.17, God made a promise to Abraham, and his promise stands throughout all eternity. And he said, if you can count the stars, that is how many I will make your descendants, as countless as the stars. The promise he made to Abraham. And the promise that he made to Abraham was this, eternal life for everyone who believes in the love of Jesus Christ. Not the love of the world, the love of Jesus Christ. There's a different love. Lucifer, Satan, the devil is in, first, in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it says that Lucifer, Satan, the devil is the God of this world. But you see, that's a counterfeit love. And he is the God of this world now temporarily until Jesus Christ puts all his enemies under his feet. For the earth is his footstool, says in Hebrews. And so what Jesus Christ is doing he is making all things manifest, all wickedness manifest in the flesh until the final indignation, until the wickedness, Lucifer, Satan, the devil, manifests in the flesh to fight against his people and against himself. So God has a plan. And God is saying that we are to stand firm, that we are to receive his Holy Spirit and be obedient to his Holy Spirit to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. In 1 Peter 4, 16 to 19 says that 
it is time now for household to begin for judgment to begin with the household of God. So if the judgment begins with us, what will happen to the ungodly man, to the sinner, to those who persecute the children of God? God has a plan. God is using his church to be persecuted first. God is using his church as a snare, as a trap to lure Satan, the devil, into persecuting the word of God. And the word of God is the Holy Spirit living inside the children of Jesus Christ. In Acts 2.17 says, And in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Yes, and on my men servants and my maid servants in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth beneath blood and fire and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the blood into, and the moon into blood before the day of the Lord comes and the great and manifest day. And it shall be that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This means that whoever is able to reach out to Jesus, whoever Jesus Christ allows to cry out in times of great tribulation, in times of destruction, in times of war, in times of famine, in times of environmental catastrophe. Whoever God allows to cry out to Jesus in truth, in truth, through His Holy Spirit, will be saved in those days. And these days are upon us right now. Jesus Christ promised us eternal life when we receive His Holy Spirit. The reality of God is this, that we all share in the light of Jesus Christ. And His light is the Holy Spirit living in us. And Luke 9, 34, 36 says that, let the light in you not be part dark. What Jesus Christ is saying is that we can have one foot in heaven and one foot in, on earth, in the world. And what that, that is not enough to get a first fruit salvation. That is not enough to be saved without having to pass through fiery waters of judgment including hell itself. So, in hell is eternal. There is no time there. In hell is a place that is t uh, uh, eternal torment that a person feels. For a th it says in the Bible that it's for a thousand years, and that thousand years is a spiritual time. Um, it is a spiritual time because there's no time in heaven. It is symbolic of all the sins ever committed. And in hell, because there's no time, no one can escape hell. Hell is a prison. It is a place of torment. And that's where all people who are not consecrated in the Holy Spirit end up going. And then only to stand before God at the white throne judgment. That's the reality. That is the reality of hellfire. And then whoever's name is not written in the book of life and the book of remembrance, will be cast into the lake of fire to be forgotten for eternity. That is the finality. That is the death of the soul. As is written in Revelation 20 and Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. So this, what God is doing, God is calling everyone to the marriage of the Lamb. God is wanting no one to suffer. God wants everyone to be saved. God is calling out, sending out warnings. There are many YouTube videos. There are many testimonies. The gospel is being preached throughout the entire world as a warning for everyone to conform, to receive the love of Jesus, to turn away from the worldly sins, that they not be damned, that they not perish in everlasting hellfire. Jesus Christ has a particular following. The following is through the Holy Spirit. There is no other following of Jesus Christ. Any other Christ is false. In Matthew 24, Jesus Christ said, be careful. Watch that no one fools you. For many people will come in my name saying I am the Christ and will deceive many. These false Christs, they come in the form of political parties, saviors, they come in the form of education. They come in the form of technology, education, social, 
programs, all types of ways that lead a person away from God. Those are false Christs. False Christs proclaim themselves saviors. False Christs lead you to false saviors. False Christs are those that speak out of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, without the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. The true Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, is the Jesus Christ of the Bible. The Jesus Christ of the Bible was written through the first generation followers who actually saw him. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we saw it, and testified to it, and proclaimed to you the eternal life was, was, which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father, and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing this, that your joy may be complete. So John is writing as a first frame witness to the life of Jesus Christ. John and the Apostles, also written in Acts, they actually saw Jesus. They actually sat with Jesus. They handled Him, says the Bible. They witnessed His miracles. They were with Him. And, and those are the, the ones who wrote regarding Jesus Christ. That's why the Jesus Christ of the Bible is the only true Jesus Christ, because the first frame reference is always the most accurate account of the subject being written or testified regarding. Jesus Christ says, Love has nothing better than this, that one lays down his life for his brethren, and says, You are my brothers if you lay down, if you are obedient and do whatever I tell you to do. It is appointed for a man to die and face the judgment. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 says that this is the final ends of the matter, to obey God and to keep his commandments, for this is the full duty of man. The most important thing for a human being to do is to love God and to follow His commandments. And the commandments that Jesus Christ gave us is to love our Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. God says, it's mine to avenge. I'm the one who will avenge. I'm the one. And what God, what Jesus Christ is speaking regarding, He's regarding that murdering and killing and lying does not inherit the kingdom of God. Anyone who murders or kills or lies or deceives will not inherit the kingdom of God. That is the false Jesus Christ. The, that is uh, the, who is doing these things and telling you that it's okay to kill and murder and kill and deceive and lie. That's the false Jesus saying those things. The true Jesus Christ proclaimed that anyone who murders and kills and lies and deceives will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, Jesus Christ, what he did is he made a new covenant. He made a new covenant. He went from the first physical covenant of Moses to the second covenant to a new covenant that is the covenant of soul, of spirit. And what Jesus said, he says, I give you a new law. You heard it was said to hate your enemies, but now I say you are to love your enemies and to pray for those who persecute you. So what Jesus Christ did is he made a brand new spiritual covenant. And it's the covenant of the Word of God, the covenant of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was as a lamb led to the slaughter. He was obedient. In the Zion says he, he did not open his mouth like a lamb before its shears. He did not open his mouth because he knew he was being obedient to the Father. He knew that his death would bring salvation for all humanity. It pleased the Father. And the same is written in Philippians that says that Jesus Christ was obedient, even obedient unto the death of a cross. The death of the cross in the first covenant was viewed as a person who was completely cursed. 
And that transgression has came into this covenant also. For in Galatians says that the covenant holders have gone back from being spiritual to going back into the law. And thus, they, they have gone reverted back into the old ordinances where when they see someone persecuted for the cross of Christ, they actually look at that person as being cursed. The devil is using that to silence the people that they do not speak regarding their, their hurts, regarding their, uh, their, their pains, or regarding their failures. Because in the first covenant, failure was regarded as being cursed. But the new covenant is different. In the new covenant, we have become martyrs for Christ. We have become his spokesmen. We become his, his uh, representation of what he did on the cross. Jesus says in Ma through Peter in 1 Peter chapter 4, 16, 17, that it's time for judgment to begin with the household of God. So if the judgment begins with us, what will happen to the unrighteous and to the ungodly, to the sinner? that know not God, to the ones that actually persecute the children of God. And this persecution begins spiritually. And then the persecution manifests physically as we saw in Syria. And this persecution is prophesied to be throughout the world through World War III and Armageddon. Satan the devil will attempt to destroy the earth. He will attempt to defeat God through the day and night covenant that God spoke to Jeremiah. Satan the devil is attempting to knock the earth out of its orbit because it has failed in every other way. It has not been able to overthrow God and it will fail. For Jesus Christ says in Matthew chapter 20, 24, 22 that if those days not be cut short, no flesh would be saved alive. The times will be cut short and Jesus Christ will come and he will appear and he will come to claim what is his and deal with sin. We are now living in a time of darkness. Jesus Christ said that the darkness is coming when no man can work. Jesus says, walk in the light while you have the light. For the darkness comes when no man can work. He who walks in darkness stumbles because he doesn't have the light. The darkness has come. The darkness has enveloped the earth. And Zechariah says that, lo, we have, we have surveyed the entire earth and all the earth is at rest. And what this regards to is that the people are at rest in their own darkness. The people have accepted. They become tolerant to all sins. And so this is the time when God is going to return. In the time of darkness. In the time when the children are persecuted. So when these things start to happen, Jesus Christ says, Look up nigh and know that your redemption is near. The Bible says that the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ, they, they know his voice, they follow him, and another will they follow. And that we are not in the dark, that these days should overpass and take us as a thief. Rather, we are children of the light. And as we walk in the light, we can walk through all things. Because Jesus Christ strengthens us and Jesus Christ watches us. Jesus Christ protects us and comforts us. Jesus Christ is the King of the light and of the darkness. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. He conquered all things after he was murdered on the cross, after he descended into the pit of hell to pray and preach and to minister and to take his people out of eternal damnation and death. Jesus Christ is the master. The Bible says that the reason why the Son of Man came is to destroy the devil, the works of the devil. And Jesus Christ destroyed the works of the devil. Jesus Christ said in the Gospel of John that the, the prince of this world now stands condemned. He's speaking regarding Lucifer, Satan, the devil. And he prophesied that before he went to the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ is peace between God and man. That's the symbol of the cross of Jesus Christ. That God sent His Son to die for us on the cross. That whoever should believe in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. What a deal! And for this reason, we all hail Jesus and we thank Jesus for His unspeakable gift that He's given us. 
that yet while we were still sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. He didn't only die for the people he loved, he didn't, and, 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 and who loved him, he also died for his enemies. That whoever should receive that love should have everlasting life. First fruit salvation, straight into heaven. Jesus Christ is asking for a grain offering today. He's asking for a thank you. That we thank him, we thank Jesus and say, thank you Jesus for dying for me on the cross. Thank you for the wonderful gift of life. Thank you for the love that you did for me. I accept your love. That's the love that I accept. Not the love of the world, because the love of the world will not die for you. The love of the world is a counterfeit love. It is a false love. It is the south, it is the left horn of the devil. It is a south smooth wind. It will speak to you kind words. It will allure you. And then it will bring you into the wilderness. And there it will kill you. Saying the devil is an opposite reaction of God. Saying the devil is death. And death goes backwards. Death is opposite to life. Murdering and killing is opposite of who Je Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ came to give life and give life abundantly. And he is the giver of life. And with Jesus, life continually flourishes and life never dies. Jesus Christ has come to give eternal life through his Holy Spirit, through the love of his cross that he did for us when he died for us on the cross. And when we accept the love of Jesus and we say yes to Jesus, we receive his Holy Spirit. The Father draws us to the Son and the Son leads us into repentance. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. For this fulfills all the laws and all the prophets. Two laws, two great laws. The most important thing for a man to do is to follow the laws of God. Following the laws of God. God said, do not kill, do not murder, do not hurt each other's souls. Do not bite each other, do not hurt each other, do not lie to each other. Do not covet, do not steal away from God the people who God so dearly loves, who God wants to have fellowship with. Be a child of the light, be a child of Jesus, receive the love of Jesus and repent and ask Jesus for his mind, for his heart and he will bless you. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, Jesus Christ says, bring all the tithes in the storehouse, bring that all to me, your flesh, your spirit, your soul. Come to me and see if I will not pour out such a blessing over you that your cup will overflow. He says, test me in all these things. Test me. Bring to me your love. Bring to me all your cares and all your burdens. Jesus said in Matthew 11, verse 27 to, 20, to 30, He said, Come to me, all you who are heavy laden and burdened, for I am gentle in heart. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus Christ is the orchestrator of life. He is the author. He is the creator and the finisher of our faith. Jesus Christ says in Luke chapter 9, 23, pick up your cross and follow me. Pick up your cross daily and follow the Lord. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. Jesus said to store up your treasures in heaven, share the gospel, receive the love of Jesus, be an ambassador for God. Be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Do the will of God. Find your purpose in life. God will give you your purpose. And then you will be storing up treasures in heaven. And then your heart will be in heaven where moth does not destroy, where rust does not come in, where thieves do not steal. That's where our hearts need to be. Our hearts need to be in the temple of Jesus Christ, in the heart of Jesus Christ, through His Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, Jesus Christ says, I will not leave you desolate. I will come to you yet a little while. 
and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Once again, Acts 2.17, God will pour his spirit in us. God will give us visions and dreams. We will be able to prophesy the reality of the kingdom of God. We will have purpose. We will have rejoicing. We will have wisdom. We will have the reality of God living in us, a familiar spirit. We will be supping with God through His Holy Spirit. We will be hearing from the Holy Spirit. We will be having, sharing in the words of the eternal priest, Jesus Christ. And those words abide in us and live forever in us. And because those words live forever, we also live forever. When we receive the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, when we seek Him diligently with all our heart and minds and our souls, Jesus says, you will find me when you seek for me. When you, when you knock, the door is open. Jesus says in Revelation, behold, I knock, I knock. Anyone who opens the door, I will sup with him and he will sup with me. Jesus is faithful. No one can love you the way Jesus Christ can love you. Jesus Christ knows you better than you know yourself. And he loves you and he's calling you. He wants you to be in relationship with him. He wants you safe in his arms. He wants you to get to know him. Jesus Christ said, Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how long have I yearned to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. Jesus Christ is yearning to have relationship with us. Jesus Christ wants us all to be saved and that no one should perish. We must be born again and receive the Spirit of God. Sin cannot enter the kingdom of God. God says, I have to be faithful to myself. I cannot be unjust and unrighteous to, to, to my kingdom. And the proverb says that the throne of the king is, is done in righteousness, is sown in righteousness. When the king is righteous, then the entire kingdom is righteous. And that is the kingdom that is coming on this earth. The righteousness, the righteous kingdom of God, where sin and hatred and, and murder and killing cannot abound. There is no death in the kingdom of God. There is no lying in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is based on love, based on truth, based on a higher social standard, based on, on, on pro-life. No destruction, no death, no decaying. We must understand the fourth dimension. We must understand. When we understand the fourth dimension, then we can understand what is happening in our lives and around us and in this world. We must understand that there is a fourth dimension. Jesus Christ said to Pontius Pilate, he says, my kingdom is not of this world. What Jesus Christ said, he said to Pontius Pilate, I am an alien. I am the alien. I am the UFO. I, my kingdom is not from here. My kingdom is in heaven. And that's where we must also be. We must understand the fourth dimension. God is alive. Jesus Christ is working. He is active. His Spirit is looking in your hearts right now. Jesus Christ is ever present, And the Spirit is always working, even when we sleep. Jesus Christ is searching. He wants you saved. He wants you to be healed of all the, of all the afflictions of the adversary. Saying the devil is the covering cherub what, he, what it does is it covers our conscience. It seals us so that we cannot see through we, uh, the darkness to the light. The fog, the cloud of Lucifer, Satan, the devil confuses. It enters into us and it covers. Satan, the devil, is a fourth dimensional creature. He is, it is a demon, a fallen cherub. And what it does is it it covers our conscience. It, it, it puts us in darkness. It puts us in confusion so that we live in, an, in, in, in a false reality. The real reality is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ calls the, the Satan the devil, he calls it the covering, twisting, piercing, fleeing cherub. Because that's what it does. It covers the darkness 
then it twists our lives around, it twists reality, then it kills us, it pierces us, and then it flees away like nothing ever happened, like, it's not, like it doesn't even exist, and it flees away from the Creator. And that is the element, the invisible element, that we must understand. We must understand both sides. We must know our enemies. Jesus Christ said, be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Be as wise as the devil and its workers. And be as innocent as God, as the Holy Spirit. The dove represents the Holy Spirit. Be blameless, God says. Be spotless before God. For God sees all things. In John 4, 24 says, God is spirit. And worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. God is spirit. We are spiritual beings. The physical covenant has passed. We are in a spiritual covenant. Jesus Christ says that, that we are to receive His Holy Spirit. We must be born again or we cannot see the kingdom of God. We cannot enter the kingdom of God unless we receive of His Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit is the, the, the Spirit of Christ Himself living within us. Jesus said, I will live in you. I will send you the helper, the Holy Spirit. He will help you. He will lead you into the truth. Yes, the spirit of truth. And he will lead you into all things. He will be with you. He will declare to you the things to come. He will take what is mine. And that is a human being. And he will declare that to you. And, and he will be there for you. When you receive Him, He will lead you, He will guide you into the reality of life, into your purpose. He will take you and He will put you into the destiny, into your destiny that God has for you ever since you were born. When we get serious with God, when we get real with God, and we search for God, for the Creator. Jesus Christ gave us two laws, and this is for all humanity to do. Love the Lord your God, love your Creator with all your heart and mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all your flesh, with all your spirit, with all your soul. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the things of God. And then all these things will be added to you. The Father will take you and draw you to His Son and His Son will lead you into repentance. He will bring you into salvation when we repent, when we seek Him when we repent Him, repent from all of our sins. You know that God is looking in your heart right now? God searches and probes. That's how He found Abraham. That's how He finds His people. That's how He does His salvation. If there's any goodness inside of you, if you are searching for the love and the truth and the justice that is of God, not of this world, but is of God, the true love, the true justice and the true righteousness of the odor of God that is the breath of life that is in all human beings. That is the salvation of God. That is God in you. That is God in you. And God will work on that to bring salvation, to bring more salvation and more salvation and more salvation. God asks you to give Him a grain offering to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, with your heart. And to be elevated, to be increased in your faith, to pray to the Lord, to ask Lord Jesus Christ to save you. There was a righteous Pharisee before God, and he said, Oh God, I thank you that I'm so righteous that I that I always put in my that I always do my duties, that I always tithe and that I always follow all the ordinances that you've given us to do. And there was another man beside the Pharisee, a poor man, and he beat his breast and he said, Oh Lord God, forgive me, a sinner, a poor man, a sinner. He beat his breasts. God said, I tell you, this person who went home poor, he went home righteous. He was the one. He was the one. Because he realized his poverty. He realized his own sins, his own fallibility, his own weaknesses before God. We are all weak before God. For the foolishness of man, of God is, is stronger than, than, the greater, than the greatness of all humanity ever combined. God is great. God is the ruler. He's the creator. And he says, I give my glory to none other.